Hello! Welcome to Better Know a VTuber, where we attempt to know a VTuber better. And today, I am joined with Eduardo. Say hello, Eduardo! Edgardo, not Eduardo. Edgardo. Edgardo. Yeah. Edgardo Niwatori. No, not Eduardo. Edgardo Niwatori, yes, that's correct. Edgardo hello, Niwatori. Everyone. My name is Edgardo Niwatori, yes. Yes. You are a Spanish VTuber. Um... Yes, I am bilingual, actually. Bilingual. I speak Spanish, I speak also, yeah, I, I speak Spanish, I speak English, I speak Spanish, I speak English, so yes, mm -hmm. that's, I am a bilingual YouTuber, yes. And a little bit of Japanese, uh, or, well, a little bit more than a little bit of Japanese. Um, yeah, 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 Nihongo wa karimasen desu ta. I cannot really speak Japanese right now, <laughs> on my tongue. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. I like to start by asking, first off, how did you find out about VTubing in general? VTubing in general came from me browsing YouTube one fateful night where I was drunk as f- Gumdrops! Mm -hmm. Then I- uh, sorry, you're, you're gonna have to edit the f- Happy! <laughs> you're gonna have to flip them out. Imagine just me being in a room, mm -hmm. very cold at 2 a.m. Mm -hmm. Then suddenly finding this small MMD looking cookies uh, female character and going like Hi Domo, kiss an eye and you're like what the <laughs> Rainbow Yeah. Then I will I was hooked because they had like Fiesta month of videos so look like yeah amazing. This is kinda interesting because Happy! the concept is amazing. Yeah. Well like yeah, uh, yeah, this is this is kinda cool. So I started like looking into it. I started finding more VTubers, like mm -hmm. uh, Kaguya Luna, like Kurumi, and mm. other ones that were just popping up around that time. Right. Seeing that they were actually going all the way through the idle route to just being content creators, stuff like that. I'm well, like, oh, well, this is interesting. So what technology did they use? Right. And then I found out about VRChat. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, well, this is interesting. This is the future. Hmm. Hmm. They're like, well, I have some spare money. What if I just upgrade my PC and get a Nicholas Rift? Right. I mean, that's that's the cheapest one because the Bebe was super expensive at the time. I don't know why. And after, yeah, pretty much after that, and talking to people, knowing people, and stuff like that, and I just became like, oh well, yeah, this is a thing. <laughs> So before you found out about VTubing, you weren't particularly familiar with uh, VR technology in general? I was familiar by uh, stuff that I have seen, like they were doing holograms and stuff like that. I was like, oh well, this is gonna be a thing maybe in 10 years. Mm -hmm. But then I didn't expect it to jumpstart so quickly, Yeah. like that it, like it does today. Mm -hmm. that so I was like, oh, this is gonna be expensive. Then I saw the price for the Oculus Rift and was like, well, this is expensive, but still manageable. Yeah. I thought it was going to be like a thousand dollars. So no. It, it was like, well, I can afford this. Let's, let's, let's do this. Mm, that surprises me because um, you're... I would view you as one of the most knowledgeable people when it comes to VR technology, when it comes to Unity and stuff, at least within like the, the uh, VTubing community. The thing about how I work is that whenever a topic in, uh, is super interesting to me, right? I don't exactly become the best of it, the best at it, but I actually go and research as much as possible, mm. ask people the right questions to get the answers I expect. And if I'm not get, asking the right, right questions, I adjust my questions so that I can actually get the results I want. Right. So that's how I kind of started like asking people around, I started asking Deed, Emiliana, other people on the forums, mm -hmm. stuff like that, to, until I was like, okay, this is pretty much what I have to do. I had to beg, I had to ask, I had to pay for some stuff, but at the, in the end I kind of just started learning and stuff, right. and get to the point where I am today. I mean, I'm not, ex I'm not an expert, but at least I know what stuff does, mm. and who to ask if I'm stuck so, with it. So your interest in VTubing led you to want to learn more about uh about vr technology and about unity and some of the other related uh, yeah yeah 3d modeling mm -hmm. ar stuff like that yes right pretty much i was wondering when you got started like when you were first uh starting with vtubing uh what was the state of the english vtubing community at that point because you were uh you started fairly early on yeah, it was pretty non-existent, mm -hmm. to be honest. Like, the only one that actually spoke English was Deet. Right. 
did you? And all the, yeah, and all the stuff that did new, mm-hmm. I kind of absorbed all all the knowledge from him. Right. That I, the most the most I, I could. I started like uh, seeing people that were starting inter- getting interested into making models stuff like that. They started talking to them. Mm-hmm. Katsumi was one of them actually. She made my first model with the uh, MMD edit. Yeah, yeah. Um, did you meet uh, Deed and Katsumi before you started VTubing? Yeah, before before that, then I then that led to me actually getting drunk with Nando. Like, well, I have an avatar, I have a model, mm. I have tracking world. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because it just released the super alpha version. Right. Yeah, I'm gonna record on this. Sunshine. And bam, mm. you got the intro video where I'm talking in three languages for some reason. <laughs> 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 yeah. I remember thinking that intro video was really cool uh, when I first saw it. Like, it, I don't know, it just, it looked really fancy to me. Like, uh, when, when I saw that, I think I had just started VTubing, or maybe it was a little bit before I started VTubing. So, mm-hmm. I was really, I, I knew next to nothing about video editing. I've kind of learned a little bit about video editing as I go. Uh, so... Yeah. So video editing in general was something kind of magical to me, and it just, uh, like, you you had some effects on it, you had, like, it, it gave kind of, like, this thing where it's, like, showing showing as if it's, like, a VHS recording and stuff, and it, it was just, like, really cool. Uh, oh, oh, that. Mm-hmm. I honestly had no idea how to use Premiere. Yeah. It's like Adobe Premiere. Mm-hmm. I learned that in maybe a day oh really <laughs> so yeah yeah that's cool like i i like i already knew how to use vegas a little but that mm. was back when i was a teenager i was like just like well i want to do youtube poops right so, so i kind of made a couple but then gave up right and i was like well yeah okay um let's Yay! learn this again because i know how to do this and this but i know how it's named on, on premiere so i just started like Going through it with a guide on the side, like a text guide. Then I was like, okay, yeah, so how this does, I started collecting effects from the internet, video, stuff like that, mm-hmm. and assets. And then I just kind of put that together with the footage. Yeah. I was like, yeah, okay, I have something here. Let's do it. When you first got started, um, what was, what were you thinking of doing in terms of things that you wanted to do? Like, was, was your mind on mostly Let's Plays, or did you want to do more skits and stuff? Mm, initially, I had the idea of be doing with Emiko. Yeah, yeah. Because I was like, Emiko, you can sing, let's do this. I, I, I can be sort of funny, not that much, but I can make Happy. posts. Mm. You can sing, so let's make Gumdrops. posts and you're singing you know, on the channel. Yeah. Did you plan on um, doing this with Emiko right from the start? Yeah, the thing is, I didn't really finish the model. Right. Because I, I commissioned it from someone from Beer Chat mm. Trader or something like that, BRC Traders. Right. But then the person bailed out, and then was like, the thing is, the person was like, well, I'm not really gonna finish it, but here you have the here you have the assets. Right. And he gave me everything, and then I asked Pete, how do I finish this? He was like, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> and phone. Mm-hmm. You got it. Nice. I was like, yeah, okay, let, let's just yeah. break this and make it work. Right, yeah. And so Emiko gave me her first audio, and I was like, yeah, let's go. Mm-hmm. So that's why she has a debut video. Yeah. That was the old model, though, before we got to where we are today. Did you know much about, like, MMD and that sort of stuff when you started uh, doing VTubing, or is that something you learned more about as you went on? I kind of knew about it. I was just like, well, this is a thing, but I mm-hmm. just kind of learned it one day. At least the little stuff that I know. I don't really know how to animate. I just know how to pose, how to load animations, how to do some right ray casting, which is the effects. Right. I just kind of learned on the, on the, on the go. Mm. And even then, I just ask for people. I commission people to help me with when I have to do animations. Right. And for, for Emiko... Um... The thing that really drew her into this was wanting to sing and wanting to like have a platform to sing. Yeah, like she has been always a singer. Mm-hmm. She also did voice acting at some point. Right. 
nothing too big. Mm. So she was like, I want to go back to that. No, when I pitched her the idea of what B2Bing was, she was like, well, I like the, I like the concept. Yeah. I want to do this. It's kind of like doing voice acting and singing at the same time. So I was just going to kind of want to do this. Mm -hmm. So she was in since the first time I told her, oh, uh, wanna, do you, you want to sing? Yeah. Right. What about Erica? Because she came uh, later. L late. Yeah. Yeah, Erica, it was just interesting what Erica! the fuck we were doing because we were talking about that all the time. Mm -hmm. so she was like, I want to stream. I want to do this. I want to make a podcast, pretty much. Right. And having a virtual persona will be more comfortable with me. Makes sense. Because I can edit, it, edit her and everything. So mm -hmm. she said she still isn't fully accustomed to stream. Right. But I, 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 I have faith that she's going to get there eventually. Sooner than later, though. Yeah. Yeah, that just depends on our schedules because, you know, this is not really our job. As it is with a lot of people yeah. that just started recently, that they're just jumping in it for the money. Mm -hmm. Of course, that's, that's valid. I mean, you do whatever the you want to do, but still... But that that was still um, have, yeah. That was never your goal, right? Like you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the the, the, only, the only thing I ask money for it's not really to su support myself. Hmm. Is to actually buy equipment so that I can do better stuff. Right. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. For example, before we did that, the only way I could get Emiko into this was to actually do a collab, pretty much. Right. Then she got her laptop, she could do street by herself. Mm -hmm. Then Erica, she didn't have a good laptop. Now she has one lap, uh, a laptop. Mm. So we still have a beer headset that we are still planning to do something with. Mm. Uh, we haven't had the chance to because of, of the corona stuff. Yeah, that's kind of... Yeah, that yeah that kind of thwarted my, my plans. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of plans. Um... But yeah, now I'll... Pretty much everything that we get, the nations that we get, they all go to improving our content. Pretty much like getting more new models, getting right uh, graphics, getting animations, getting stuff like that. And now it's kind of an interesting uh, situation because you're sort of unique amongst uh, like the Western VTubers in the sense that you're you're kind of a a group of people, like an organized group of people, all under the same umbrella. Uh, between you and Emiko and Erica, and you all uh, do, uh, you're you're all streaming. You're all kind of streaming different things. Um, yeah, yeah, that was the plan because mm -hmm. if we uh, did the thing separately, mm -hmm. that will be that will mean a risk for all of us. Yeah. Because if we get some bad actor going on around sniffing info about, I would rather have them get me than get them. Right. Because the only one that is moving in to everything is me. Right. This is to protect them, mainly because I don't want them to be embroiled in any sort of flame war or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I also think it is easier for me to deal with any fallouts or attempts at nasty stuff mm. by any uh, trolls or anything like that Right. compared to them because you know I'm very insensitive I have years of experience of going on on the internet compared to them yeah I kind of get the impression with you that uh, things kind of roll off you like like there's not a lot that people can say that kind of gets under your skin is that fair? man I'm gonna tell you, mm -hmm. I used to know people that were involved in all sorts of shady Fiesta! Like, um... Rainbow! Like the Darknet, like going into fucking terrorist organizations now, I don't know where Bomb the they are. Mm -hmm. People that were involved in, in political campaigns in the US in 2016 and stuff like that. Man, I know a lot of st stuff about that. Right. And I don't really want anyone to think that just by saying mean words or trying to harass someone, you can get away with it. Right. The moment you launch some sort of campaign against someone is the moment 
it can be reversed against you. Mm. That's why I let stuff roll. I know people meme a lot about me, but at the same time, if I let that get to me, it means that I'm gonna be vulnerable. Right. Like, the person doing it is as vulnerable as I am because you're pretty much ex uh, just attacking for the mm. sac uh, sake of attacking someone. Right. But you mean you mean that because of memes, right? I'm just saying that in general. Like, I have seen a lot of well, not not just uh, so, yeah. because of memes. You just uh, you have kind of an aura about you that uh, you you have like a a strong will about you. I feel. I don't know if that's strong will. No, I'm just a stubborn. That's that's more of that's more like it. Not a strong will. Hmm. Just stubborn. If I want something, it's not that I'm not gonna st I'm not gonna stop at anything about it. But I'm just gonna be like, well, I'm gonna try until like until I see that I cannot do it anymore. Right. That's pretty much the thing with B2 Bang. I started this out because, well, I was interested into the technology. I was interested in the thing. I was bored. Yeah. I was drunk. I was like, well, I'm just gonna roll with it. Yeah. This is fun as hell. Yeah. But there's this aura going on right now that is making it a little bit unfun. Right. Not for me exactly, because I, despite me saying that I'm not growing or whatever, mm -hmm. I am very isolated in a sense from the community because I, my fan base is like 60% Spanish speakers, 40% uh, English speakers. Right. Because I speak Spanish and English. Mm. But there is this kind of thing that I was expecting to happen. Like competition, now that everyone and their moms are streaming on Twitch. At the same Happy. times, at the same hours, with the same viewers, with the same concept, with the same games. Yeah. It all boils down to who gets in first, with the first jug, with the first meme, with the first appeal to the people. And that creates competition, stress to people that are not used to that. Mm. And that's why a lot of people are probably either doing super well because they have their egos super lifted by um, their their success, and people that are feeling down, which is not good because some people are actually looking at it, at this as a way to supplement their income or to make them this their main form of income, which is gonna be hard because you have to be get super big. Yeah, and that takes time. Yeah, definitely. So go, go, yeah. So going back to the things that roll up off me is because I don't really take this as a job. I know I make it sound like a job, but that's just because I'm used to work at everything I do. Right. As if it was a job. Right. So if this is still, if this was a job, I will be like 100% more serious about it. I will be doing more stuff mm. constantly. Mm. But right now I'm just kind of like just doing the the things I want to do, like. Streaming Dark Souls at 2 a.m. in the morning. Yes, I've noticed that recently. Yeah. Mm. Or stream whatever the hell I want, or just going in, saying whatever the hell I want on Twitter. I mean, if I was more serious about this, I would not be acting like this. Right. Because this is fun. And the second you make something fun, your job, in the sense that you are stressed about how you're going to get that money. Hmm. You're not gonna like it, and you're gonna just be more cautious about everything you do because you don't want to lose it. Yeah, that's true. Um, and something something that I want to stress is that whatever you're doing right now, in six months it's probably gonna be better, or it could be worse. Yeah. In one year it could be way better, or it could be super Rainbow! that you want to quit doing everything so that you can actually go and find another source of income or... Right. Entertainment. Well, I think, um... So, yeah, yeah. So, I will actually say that... Whoever is watching this... Mm hmm If you feel that you're not having fun... Mm. You either find a way to make it fun... Or just think about quitting. Yeah. Um... Because otherwise, it's not gonna be fun if you're just stressing about money. Yeah. It... It is... It is a difficult thing to, to kind of talk to people about, because I, I agree with you, like, the important thing about this is that you're finding fun in it, or you're, you're getting something out of this. Uh, like, you, 
I, I guess with anything, like, you have to, like, sort of say, what are the pros of this? What are the cons of it? Do the pros outweigh the cons? And if they don't, then is there a justifiable reason of continuing? Um, and for most people, I, I would hope that the ultimate reason to continue is because they're enjoying doing this. Uh, they're, they're feeling something positive out of this. Uh, but yeah. with what you were saying about like increased competition with like lots and lots of uh, new VTubers coming and especially on Twitch uh, because I feel like Twitch more so than YouTube has a competitive feeling to it because it is a live thing so it's not it, it's less of like oh I'll, I'll watch this person's video and this person's video it's more of a, a choose this person or this person or, or whatnot so it can it can easily feel a lot more competitive uh and i think especially if you're in this as a hobby if you're in this to have a good time you have to kind of guard against letting yourself get too swept up into a feeling of competitiveness which yeah the that's the difference between creators that are actually in this for the money mm. and creators that are just in this for the hobby. Right. Like, a lot of people will be just uh, pretending that they don't do this for the money. Mm. And you can tell when someone is doing this for the fame, the money, to get people to know them, mm. become influencers, and people who are doing this as a hobby. They have completely different attitudes when they stream. At least when, when streaming, because on video it is super easy to fake that. When you're doing something live, you can tell when someone is stressing out about... Yeah. Yeah, getting that back. And when someone is just having fun, it is different. Yeah. So, it is... It is something you have to balance out, because someone that is doing this for money can easily be converted to the hobby side. Mm hmm If they get enough people following them. Mm. But someone that does this as a hobby can be easily bl be blinded by the money and be on the competitive side if they're not careful. Yeah. Yeah. Or or the reverse of that, like, there there's two different ways that they can kind of get swept up in it. Either, like, they start doing really well, and, and you were talking about it earlier, how, like, there's that fear if you start doing well of losing it. And suddenly, yeah. and suddenly, while you went into this with like perhaps low expectations and no stakes, suddenly you've assigned stakes to this because you you see like a threshold that you've reached and you don't want to fall below it. So there's that potential way, and then there's the other way where like you're doing this for a while and like uh, people aren't uh, really engaging with you, and then you start feeling. Uh, discouraged by that because you start uh, wondering if it says something about you as a person, I guess. Yeah. Uh, something that I also want to touch about is mm -hmm. how um, a lot of the people that are actually just starting out mm -hmm. right now, people that start out are getting boosted very easily mm -hmm. compared to when I started out. Yeah. That kind of is a bummer because I feel like I'm doing... Like, maybe it's not as graphically pleasing as the other people do, because more people had the time to actually go like, um... Well, I have seen how X, Y, and Z do things, I'm gonna just improve them to go more, a little bit more prepared. Mm. I'm gonna make a budget so that I can start out. Yeah. When some people like me just start out with nothing. Yeah, the thing is, when people get boosted when they're starting out, they feel good. Mm -hmm. But when their viewership decreases later compared to other people that started the same way and got boosted the same way mm -hmm. they might start feeling down a lot yeah because they're like well i thought i was doing the same why i'm not doing as well yeah and that's when that's the exact moment when people get swept out by negative thoughts yes about this this concept this uh format of of content yeah and this isn't uh i don't think this is like a, a vtuber exclusive thing this is easy for us to talk about in terms of like the VTubing community because that's the one we're a part of but that that like danger of getting swept up swept up into the negativity of something I think it's a very like human thing in general 
uh, regardless of what you're doing, if there's any, like, especially if there's any kind of potential for outside feedback or lack thereof, uh, it can be uh, easy to get swept up into the negatives. Like, uh, just to give a, a kind of random example from my past, uh, I was working on a novel for a while. Uh, and it wasn't, um, a job. Uh, this was a, this was a passion project of mine because I like sci-fi and fantasy and I wanted to write a sci-fi fantasy novel. So I worked on that, uh, pretty regularly for years. And for a long while there, uh, I couldn't find anyone who would be willing to read it to like, just tell me what they thought of it. Like friends, family, I would send it to them and they wouldn't... Uh, read it. They they didn't uh, they didn't want to take the time, uh, and that was very uh, discouraging, um, because then you start feeling isolated. You start, uh, or at least I started feeling isolated. I started feeling like um, like maybe what I was doing wasn't good or, enough. Yeah, yeah, uh, or worthless. Like, yeah, why why did I spend my time on this? Yeah, exactly. So, um. And so, like, those kind of negative feelings, you know, they can, they can crop up with anything. I think, I think especially when you're uh, trying to create something. But I think, again, the important thing is to, um, to, to kind of get your own joy out of it, if, if, if at all possible. To be like, well, I'm doing this to make me happy. And if it makes other people happy, too, then that's even better. But, you know... Even if, even if, like, it's not many people, or even if it's not any people, as long as, um, as long as I'm enjoying it, then, then there's purpose to it. And that's, I think, the idealized way of looking at it. Looking at anything, really. Um, yeah. That's, that's, that's my philosophy. Definitely, it's not always, uh, easy to follow, like, I, I certainly fall into negative negative thoughts too, so I I can absolutely sympathize with people that uh, get into that kind of mindset, and it's one of those things that I think you constantly have to fight against. Uh, not yes, that that is that is correct. The thing that I can actually recommend to people mm -hmm. when they're struggling struggling with that is. If you're in a community mm -hmm. and you're seeing that they're flocking to some other content that you might even deem lower quality than yours, mm. first thing you have to do is look at how you're doing things. Yeah. From an objective standpoint. Yeah. Have someone that is not related to the community look at both and compare them. Mm. See why the other person is winning. It can even boil down to aesthetics at some point, which is very Sandra. stupid, but a lot of people that watch VTubers, I don't, want, I don't want to generalize, but people go first for the design, then they go for the voice, then they go for the content. Mm. Like that, in that order, they first go for the visual, then they go for the auditive part, then they go for the actual stuff that is being presented. Mm -hmm. In that order, even if you don't think about it, you do it like that, visual, auditive, then the content. Yeah, and I. Th so, when yeah, oh, sorry, sorry, Benning, I'm. Oh no, absolutely. So if you if if you're if you're struggling with that, mm -hmm. you I would recommend you having to reconsider what you're doing. Mm. Try to branch out outside of the community mm. you're working in. Not saying that you have to quit completely. Yeah. But try to branch out, reach to other people. When you meet new people, you make new connections. You can actually get them to recommend you. Mm -hmm. You can actually get them to promote you. And that might bring in people that will be interested in, in that. Then that might give you new ideas on how to improve your stuff. Right. And that's how you grow organically. That's one way to do it. Another way to do it is to just harden go through it. And just keep making stuff that you find interesting. Then people will be like, well, at some point they will be like, well, I'm, I don't want to see this person anymore. Let's see what this other person is doing. It at some point they're gonna get tired of the same, having the same content. Yeah. So they're gonna start looking at other people. Hmm. 
That's something that happens a lot, even on YouTube. Yeah, that's fair. A channel is super popular one month, two months, three months, then the fat goes out and they go to another one because of a meme or whatever. Hmm. It is hard to to ride this wave, but if you can ride one wave that can get you to a higher point, mm. make sure you can take that opportunity. Again, it, it all relies on how well you are at social, how, how good you are at, so, at socializing, mm. how well off you are with yourself, mm -hmm. and how well you can actually seize those opportunities that pres that can be presented to you. Mm -hmm when you are creating new content or you are trying to branch out or you are trying to cap capture the audience you actually want to retain when you do your live content or your YouTube content. Right. Kind of jumping topics a little bit because this was something I wanted to ask too. Um, yeah. I was wondering because we, I asked you earlier about like what the state of the English community was when uh, you got your start. I was wondering what the the Spanish VTubing community was like at that point? To be honest, it was completely different mm. than the English community. Like right now, there is not that many VTubers. Like probably there are there are less than fifty right now. Right. On the Spanish there is, side. There has, yeah, on the Spanish side right now. Mm. When it started out, there were like um, maybe six. Right. Seven. And they were all creators that were doing something else, like MMD and Utau. Right. And they just kind of jumped over to VTubing because it was like, well, this is a new MMD. At least that's the impression they had at first. Mm -hmm. When they talked to me at some point, well, that was kind of a clash because they were like, well, this is this is not working like in my old community. Well, it is not the same thing. It is a completely different concept. Mm. You have to put in more effort than just slapping stuff together on MMD and just uh, rendering and just posting the video to YouTube with your copyrighted song. Now you have to actually make it thought, thoughtful um, content. Right. It can captivate people because this is just YouTubing with a, an avatar mm. for six months or eight months or so after I debuted. Mm -hmm. I was the only Spanish speaking VTuber that had motion capture. Right. Like, I was the only one in the world, that <laughs> and the other ones were just doing hand, uh, animation by hand. Right. Just very and, hard. And, yeah, I commend them for that, because that's Sunshine! not something people do mm. willingly. But these guys were just uh, powering through with what they had. Right. There is someone that is bigger than me on YouTube and Twitch, but still, that person has been doing the MMD stuff since um, 2015. Mm-hmm. Not as a VTuber, they just came out as a VTuber maybe in 2019, so... Still, four years of content. Yeah. Compared to when I started out, well, of course they're gonna have more people than me, but still... Mm -hmm. It is something... That I have seen, like, there's a lot of streamers now that were on, from VRChat and stuff that are now doing this. Yeah. Yeah, there's definitely been an influence. Of, of, yeah, uh, yeah, of course there's going to be an overlap from the Spanish side to the b 2 wing side. Mm -hmm. And they're doing fine. So, kudos to them. Right. I'm not. I'm saying that I'm not really going to mingle with them, but the chance hasn't really happened. I tried to get some people together, but that's when people... When, well, they were younger people than me, so they, of course they, they were, they were going to feel offended when I told them that they had to behave. Right. As a group, because they cannot really have the same... Uh, beef they had before with with, she, with each other, mm. which was which was pretty much just high school drama. Right. If we wanted to do something as a collaborative effort, mm. so that was my first attempt at getting people together to do something. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that failed. It was all people that were looking only for their own own interest instead of doing something together. Mm. So I was like, no, this is not gonna work. I got some good friends out of it, some good acquaintances. Yeah, so it wasn't... But still... It wasn't a yeah, complete but loss. Still, yeah, it wasn't a complete loss, mm. but still, the people that still linger are slightly toxic sometimes, so I'm just kind of like avoiding them. Right, that makes sense. So yeah. Mm. Thankfully now, I'm, I'm a little bit more rooted into the English-speaking community rather than the Spanish-speaking one. Yeah. And that has led to me to meet new people. 
for example, that's how I am now part of Hyperdrive. Yeah, Hyperdrive is, is still pretty new. It's something I'm very interested in. Uh, Hyperdrive, yeah. Mm. You want me to talk about that? Because it's gonna be a little bit of a long story. So Hyperdrive is born because the Cherry Tree wanted to expand. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, they didn't want to do things as a normal Japanese company does. Right. Which, which I'm sure you have heard horror stories from. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, some people. Yeah, I, I know some people that um, uh, that that have had uh, less than positive experiences. We'll say. Yeah, which this is why I'm afraid also of the whole whole life thing. But I'm gonna touch that later. Yeah. So hyperdrive is pretty much like a like a syndicate, I think. Mm. Like an artist union, pretty much. Right. Like, we're a bunch of, of streamers slash content creators uh, that are trying to just make it like a organization mm -hmm. that is a front as a company mm. so that we can get deals for everyone in, or a portion of it, of it right. depending on how it works out. Rather than just making our stuff all uh, homogeneous, mm -hmm. like, Gather to one single specific audience. We're just like, well, this is a group. We're gonna do our thing, some or things separately. We're just gonna wrap the name. Mm -hmm. And when we actually work together, we're gonna present it as this. After we all agreed on doing it like this. Right. If we don't do it like that, there should not be hard feelings. If you don't want to be part of that effort, well, that's fine. You can still be part of Hyperdrive. When we bring something new in, you can participate again if you want. If you don't, well, that's fine. As long as you actually cooperate and help other people inside the group. Yeah, so the the idea behind it, I think, is, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, is, is to help out uh, the VTubers in the group is, whilst, while taking yeah. a light touch to to kind of a management perspective. Yeah, it's more, yeah it is not exactly like, uh, where are this group, where are this gang now? It is actually something that we're pushing to be more like a syndicate. Right. Rather than being like a media content network, mm -hmm. like the stuff that Machinima and Rooster did and stuff like that happened before, they did before and failed. Right. Or like the Japanese companies, which are actually companies, media companies that have the people working as VTubers as voice talents and singing talents and acting talents. Yeah. Where it's... This is more like, well, yeah, we, we all do everything mm -hmm. on our own. Mm -hmm. We help each other. Yeah. And we actively seek support for the whole group, if possible. Mm -hmm. So that's something we are trying to do with that. That's the approach. Right now, we don't really are... We are not really accepting people in. Yeah. But after we're more settled in, we have our rhythms going on, and we had everything well done in paper and everything, mm. we might open at, um, admissions, but that's going to be something in, in the future. Maybe... Maybe for next year, depending on how the corona stuff happens. Yeah. Or develops. Well, I would look at... Uh, is it fair to say that Hyperdrive right now is still in its infancy and sort of its forming formative phase? Yeah. Mm. It, it is in its formative phase. Like, mm. we launched it. But there's still stuff we need to develop. Yes. Before we can actually start adding in more people or stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So going now to the Hololive thing. Mm -hmm. Most Japanese companies... When they say that they're B two B companies, what they actually mean is that they are alternative media companies. So they're gonna have upper management, they're gonna have editors, they're gonna have um, media artists, they're gonna have acting talents, they're gonna have uh, a legal side, they're gonna have an IT side. Right. So this is more organized like a normal company, like a normal media company. Right. But they're alternative in the sense that they are not using the common uh, forms of communication, like TV or radio, mm -hmm. or just established um, uh, media sites. They are using alternate forms of streaming, like mobile streaming uh, or YouTube or stuff like that. Right. With a not common format, which is VTubing. VTubing is rather new. Like, the idea has been there forever since there's cartoons and stuff like that. But having someone act out live, a character, yeah, 
is something that has not been done so much uh, in, the, in, the, in the past two decades until now. Yeah, I would. I believe this. Yeah, I believe this is because the technology was not just there. Yes, I think that's. Uh, I think that's a fair assessment. That uh, now that the technology is available and relatively accessible, uh, VTubing can be a genre. Whereas, like five years ago, it was not as it was not as viable as it is today. Yeah. Yeah, it probably was just like a skit with an animated character mm -hmm. with a voice actor. Yeah. But now you can do that live, so <laughs> yeah. it is a complete different genre now. Mm -hmm. And that's what these uh, companies are aiming for. Right. So when people apply to Hololive, at least the English side, mm -hmm. they have to have in mind that they're going to be applying as... An employee. As a person that is better, yeah, as an employee. Yeah. yeah. As a person going to get recruited as a talent. Right. A talent meaning that they do voice acting, they do singing, they do um, media stuff, like mm -hmm. editing their own videos, making their own memes, doing their own Photoshop, yeah. doing their own images, macros, stuff like that. With the aid of some people, with the art and stuff like that, but still, they are still going to have to come up with ideas that... Uh, toe the line the company set for you. Yeah. Um, and to develop an audience using that yeah. as well. It's not... Um, like, I don't want to be harsh on Hall Live or, or the people that apply, but I, I do hope that the that they kind of have an appreciation that what they're entering into is probably more of an employee-employer relationship as opposed to uh, a partnership. In some cases, yes. Yeah. It depends on how you negotiate stuff. It does. Life. Yeah, yeah. That that's true. Or too. with or with or with any company, because yeah. there are other Japanese companies that you enter into a partnership. Right. Where you're offering your services for X amount of money and X amount of commissions or whatever, mm -hmm. or just X amount of characters or X amount of hours yeah. per week. So, yeah, it's it's kind of like being an actor, pretty much. Like, yeah, if you know how an actor works. Uh, for movie productions, for TV, for mm -hmm. theater, stuff like that, uh, for musicals, it is the same thing. Yeah. You're an actor for hire. Mm. And they're gonna pay you money to be a person for a set amount of time. So you have to take that into mind. You're not gonna just sit all pretty uh, in, in front of a camera and do the funny voice, no. Mm. You can be an indie VTuber if you want to do that, but if you are going to be hired by someone, those people are going to have expectations about you. Yeah. Pretty much like any job. They're going to ha uh, ask you to meet some metrics. They're going to ask you to do some stuff. Mm -hmm. To develop a certain amount of fans or people in the community or people that are going to donate money to you or buy your products. Right. And you have to be mentally ready for that commitment if you are accepted and fit the bill they want to. Yeah. And, they want to fail. And I would imagine that's something that they would uh, go over with uh, pers the perspective people that they bring on is like what their expectations are uh, like uh, how because I, I uh, I'm not sure if I remember this correctly. I think it I don't want to say in case I I'm not remembering it correctly but I think like on like their application form they do mention like how often they expect uh, people to produce some form of content a week and, and yeah, things like that. Yeah, like, they, they, they expect you to do this three times a week. Yeah. They didn't specify the hours. Mm -hmm. And they specified that they will be at least married to the company with a contract for at least a year. Right, I think. right, right. So there's going to be a year where you're, you're, you're going to have to put a lot, a lot of overtime onto it. Yeah. Because it's pretty much like they're giving you a platform to become an influencer. Yeah. And that's neat, but at the same time, mm. it just takes a lot of effort, a lot of creativity, a lot of time. Yeah. You you have to be, you have to be uh, kind of going into it with eyes wide open, but but at the same time, like for some people, it's also a really great opportunity, and there's nothing there's nothing wrong with applying for a job or like applying for. Uh, an opportunity like this as long as you know what you're getting into as long as you know what you're getting into and like 
you pay attention to the contract and stuff to make sure that uh, you'll be treated in a way that you're comfortable with and all that. Um, so there's nothing wrong with applying, but uh, but yeah, just as long as you aren't. Yeah, if you're gonna apply, kudos to you, best of luck, mm-hmm. but you're gonna have a hard time if you're thinking it's gonna be easy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is not gonna be easy. You have to, you have to be of the mindset that that there will be there will be hard work involved because because like you said uh you're going into it with or or hall live will be entering into this with you with certain expectations and that's true of anything you apply to um like if you apply to a job or something if they hire you they're hiring you with certain expectations uh, that you have to that you have to understand and you have to be uh open to meeting it's going to be interesting. It's going to be really interesting to see how things are after Hall Live. If that, I guess, if that changes anything on the English side or not. Um, on the one hand, well, it's mm-hmm. it's, it's going to put a lot a lot more pressure on the people that are doing this on them for the money because they're going to have a lot a hard time competing with people. Yeah. Like if you're doing this, if you're doing this for the sake of like having a good time, then I guess it really doesn't change a whole lot from your perspective. But if you are doing this uh, f- from a business perspective, and again, there's nothing wrong with doing this from a business perspective. Uh, if that's really what you want to do, it's it's difficult, but it's not like it's not wrong uh, to to want to. Uh, make this into a job if you think you can make it into a job uh but it is it is difficult and and i guess hall live would introduce more competition for people that are in that are like looking at this from that perspective but i guess on the positive side like the the more optimistic look at it is it could also potentially bring more people uh, make more people aware of VTubing as a thing because right now um, I think, and this is changing to some extent, but I think on the Western side there's still like a massive percentage of people that just don't know that VTubing's a thing, or if they know that VTubing's a thing, they don't know that there's an English side to it. Uh, obviously, more people have become aware of it in recent months. But there's still a lot, a lot of people that know nothing about it. So, with every big initiative like this, there's the potential that it'll draw more people into the community, make more people aware of it as a genre, and from there, they could potentially branch off and look at other VTubers as well, and maybe find other people that they like. So, uh, Yeah, probably, but hmm. still, I think it's going to be... The community's growing yeah but at the same time since there's too many so many people they're gonna be cannibalizing the, each other's views a little bit too much mm. if the market doesn't open uh, for people that are not into it like people don't push or expand out of their boundaries yeah people are just gonna keep uh, having the same viewers having the same time mm. they're gonna be like uh, having a hard time retaining the people for, because they're gonna go to whoever they find less boring today. Uh, I'm wondering. So, uh, I I started December 2018. Do Do you remember when you started VTubing? Yeah. Uh, when 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 did you get your start? November, actually. November. <laughs> okay, I thought you started around the same time yeah. as me. No, no November. Yeah, November, November 2018. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. 2018 is correct, right? Yeah. Okay. So we've been in this not quite two years now. Like this has been about a year and a half, roughly. And yeah. uh, things have changed dramatically over the last year and a half compared to where it was. Uh, I, I'm interested to know what do you think things are going to be like a year and a half from now? Well. It depends on what I do mm-hmm. and on how uh, the general public reacts to Hololive mm-hmm. English, pretty much. So you see, you see Hololive as a potentially uh, big event, big maybe. Uh, I see it as a big event, mm. 
that might crash and burn or that might open the floodgates of people interested in English VTubers. Right. Not saying that is a bad thing, like, crash and burn means that maybe the VTubing pitch doesn't work with the idle concept, like it does in Japan for the, for the West. Right. And more of a casual streamer or lewd streamer approach will be the best approach. Mm. Like with Melody, for example. Mm. Or any of the VTubers that... I mean, talking about the casual streaming, like only the VTubers that are in the community. Right. Or it might bring in more people expecting people to be more idolish or more... Um, how to explain it? Reserved or professional, right. rather. Well... Like, they will, expect, they will expect the VTuber to be, like, voice trained, that they can sing, that they can do this and that. Mm -hmm. In one single package, rather than just being strong at yeah. one single point. Speaking in, like, generalizations, I, I think it tends to be that on the Japanese side, VTubing took a lot of its cues from, uh, from idols, whereas on the Western side, VTubing took a lot of its cues from let's players slash streamers so yeah mm, so it's it's two very uh different kind of approaches and two very different kinds of uh content and personalities um and expectations i guess yeah 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 so like mm. like in, in japan um from what i've seen they expect more content uh kind of like Miyaki Mino mm. or like uh, people that are just gonna be entertainers that talk with people right about X or Y or C thing mm -hmm. but over here in the West when you watch a streamer you expect them to be playing games games pretty much yeah or to be talking about stuff but not in the same way the Japanese do well I also think like there's a greater uh, willingness on the on the western side for like people to be accepting of the idea that that you know there's a a person behind the model um with with yeah whereas on yeah co compared compared to the japanese one they expect the person to be flawless mm, yeah the the I, I guess i guess that kind of goes back to the idol thing like uh w with an idol you you want I assume someone that's portraying like an idealized uh, version or like what your idealized perception of, of how someone should be. And I think kind of as an extension to that, maybe on the Japanese side, um, they don't necessarily want uh, VTubers to break character. They expect them to break character. Mm. Because it's very hard to stay in character 100% of the time unless you're a video only VTuber. Right. That's true. But they expect the personality that breaks character to be more interesting than the 1%. Hmm. Like, if you're supposed to be a princess, they may expect you to be a complete slob or a complete weirdo that is a pervert or whatever. Hmm. Or if they see a cute character, they expect the character to be kind of creepy. Right. Not huh. saying that they, they don't really break the mold, but at the, they have their their perceived com, uh, conceptions about how a character should be. Right. But in the West, they are expecting just a regular dude with or a regular girl mm -hmm. with an avatar that is funny, that is entertaining. Mm. In some cases, they expect the person to be single and catering to their needs. Depending on what the pitch of the character is, or what you advertise yourself as. Right. It is slightly different in that regard. Right. Like, correct me if I'm wrong, whoever is watching, but sometimes I feel like Japan is a society of preconceptions. Not like, uh, like they are like um, prejudiced or whatever. I feel that they already have this set of preconceived ideas about how a character should be. And the fun about VTubers is that they usually break those. So, like, they defy uh, what your preconcept preconceived notions would be. Yes, yes, yes. 
Um, and you're speaking. Well, in the well, oh, yeah. Well, in the West, uh, from what I've seen, people expect streamers to be the, some certain kind of person. Hmm. But at the same time, they are cool if that person doesn't meet that, as long as it is as it's entertaining. Right. That's interesting. I haven't really thought about Japan being a place of kind of preconceptions. I don't know. I don't feel like I know enough to really know if that's accurate or not. Um, yeah, yeah. Whoever, whoever is watching this, I'm sorry if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. But that's what I have gathered after watching maybe like a hundred VTubers. Mm. Japanese VTubers and interacting with Japanese people. Right. And Asians in general, pretty much. So, like, not really prejudice. Uh, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Prejudice, prejudice. Uh, uh, but more like they respect a certain something when they see the package. Right. But they are hoping to find something else when they open that package. Right. So, means, yeah. So, like, it, if the character is portraying themselves as very prim and proper, their hope is that they find, like, instances of them, like, breaking that mold. Is that, is yeah. that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, just in a general sense, that's kind of, like, where a lot of, well, it's a potential, uh, it's a potential source of comedy writing, like a character breaking expectation. Uh, doing things uh, that you wouldn't expect from them. It's not really the type of comedy I lean on because, like, uh, pending and, and subtitles don't break uh, their molds a whole lot. Um, but at the same time, I think it is interesting when, when uh, characters kind of break that mold and show another side of them, or, or uh, kind of have that um, that kind of contrary yeah. personality, that contrary yeah. side. For example, yeah, I'm gonna give, I'm gonna put myself as an example. Mm -hmm. When you see this, like before you knew me, when you saw the, the character, mm -hmm. you didn't expect it to be the way it is. Mm -hmm. Like, you didn't expect Edgardo to be dipping. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, Yeah, you didn't expect it to be like that. Like you expect him to be a little bit more contained, I guess, but not yeah. as no. ghosty. Right. We've talked a lot about VTubing in general. We haven't uh talked as we haven't talked a whole lot about you as a VTuber. That's fine. That's that's mm -hmm. fine. They get to know me because I'm pretty much just opinions when I'm a VTuber. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Um, I am wondering though, like as far as, like, what your goals are for, like, the future, like, what kind of content you want to make, uh, how, th how things are right now for you, how th you kind of want things to change, as far as, like... Well, I want... Mm -hmm. I want to... I want to actually make more animated stuff. Mm -hmm. I want to develop a story that we were working on. Mm hmm uh for a while yeah like lore wise so i'm working towards that mm. but still uh there's still stuff that i still need i need more um budget pretty much right <laughs> so that's why i'm streaming and hoping to get more people to support us right because I, I know streaming is very different from uh youtube it is it is very much that so when i am actually well, I'm, like it sounds like that I don't have a goal, but the goal is to actually get enough equipment so that I can actually make full music videos for Emiko to make lore stuff for me, Emiko mm. and Erika. Yeah. To introduce a few more characters, uh, but that's gonna be later on. Right now, what limits me is that, uh, well, besides the Corona stuff right now. Mm. I don't have everything I haven't had. Yes. Like, I need more your headset, I need trackers, and stuff like that. Yes. To actually make more videos like that. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. Also, the whole stuff about 
VR chat and virtual spaces. Right. I also want to create a multimedia thing for that. What do you mean by a multimedia thing? I, I want to create a few worlds for that. Kind of like oh. how the virtual market stuff is made. Mm-hmm. They have had that idea ever since I got my beer headset when I went into a few worlds when I started out. Right. Before even be tubing, I was like, well, I want to do stuff like this someday. Is that... Uh... When you're when you're talking about creating VR chat worlds, is that something that you would use uh, for your videos, or is this uh, separate? Separate. Mm-hmm. That... It still is gonna be like made by yes, just, but still <laughs> it's gonna be uh, yeah like mm-hmm. it's just personal goals, pretty much. Right. That makes sense. Like Emiko wants wants to make original music at some point. I also want to go back to playing music, so but I don't have money for that. So. Mm-hmm. I just have to uh, work hard, save up, yeah, get people interested in your content as well. Because some people find us entertaining. I mean, we got like one K maybe. Mm-hmm. You, you're talking about subscribers, um, or yeah, 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 or well, yeah, actually, and followers, yeah, yeah, followers and Twitch, yeah, but both of them I have one K. Yeah, yeah, we have one K. Yeah, so they find our content entertaining. So at some point, hmm, I would like that to support our endeavors and get us more budget yeah so that we can work with more uh stuff yeah like commissions nice stuff commission better have more time probably <laughs> because our jobs are very restricting in that sense right now I'm, I'm a quarantine so that's why i'm able to talk with you like this yeah but the second i go back to work the crisis that has been going on the past two months it's gonna dwindle it's gonna go down oh yeah definitely um i i know um when you're when you're working like uh, as you said right now you're on quarantine so you have more free time i i think that's true of a lot of us a lot of us have more free time than uh we anticipated uh right now um but when you're when when things are kind of normalized uh you you're you're a very busy person is that fair to say what, what do you mean? Like you, you work a lot. You work a lot of hours and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, so does Emiko, so does Erica. Mm-hmm. Right now, I have the advantage that I have nothing like to do professionally. Right. <laughs> but that's why I'm working on stuff. Yeah. Like streaming more, trying to get stuff done for videos. Hmm. Um. But the second I go back to work, that's gonna change. Mm. Yeah. And that's... that might disappoint people, but you know, this is a hobby. This is not my yeah. full-time job. Well, it's a, it's the reality of the situation. I'm in a similar boat where I I'm streaming a lot right now cuz uh I I have no work at the moment. Uh so I have nothing else to do and I hope uh someday I'm going to have a job again and then then I won't have as much time for streaming, of course, but you know, it's important. You, you got to like this is this is a lot of fun and um and I think it's fair to say that we both really enjoy doing this but like we also have to um we, we have to do things for money too um yeah hmm. uh so yeah um but it sounds it sounds interesting I you you have uh some lore videos on your channel already and it would be really cool to see that story expanded once uh once you're in a in a position to spend uh to do so once you have the uh equipment and budget that um that you need to to make it the way you want to make it yeah eventually it's gonna happen but mm. not in the foreseeable future right it's gonna take some unless time. We, unless we get a super ultra crazy ass uh, donation that enables me to buy everything mm. that we need. Right. I don't think it's gonna happen. <laughs> we should probably start wrapping up, but before we do, was there anything uh, you wanted to talk about? Like, anything you wanted to say in particular before we uh, close things out? Not really. If you're a VTuber, keep trying. Mm. If you're feeling down, if you're feeling like you're not making it. Yeah. Eventually, you're gonna have your stride. Yeah, to break exactly. Out, to break out. Even if you feel that you're taking a long time to do it, mm-hmm. eventually you're going to do it. Yes. And if it's not happening, you have to work your way out of it. Yes. Like reach out to other people, reach out to other creators, start doing stuff that is not within the circle. Mm-hmm. 
then maybe you'll get more people, more a new audience that is going to support you more. Yeah, Not yeah. saying that you have to leave the community, but still yeah. try to reach out to other people. I think, I think it's always nice to, if you can, to get outside perspectives. Just, just to kind of uh, gauge uh, how you're doing. Just to kind of get that sense of, like, especially if it's someone that's not super familiar with VTubing at all. Just to kind of get, like, a very different perspective on, like... Uh, what they think of uh, what you're making and all that, but but at the same time also you know doing your best to stay positive, doing your best to stick with it, and it, and also doing your best to try and experiment and, and learn new things because if you're learning new things, then odds are like your future stuff is going to benefit from it. Um, every time you learn a new trick, be it like with streaming or video editing. Or like even just like uh, like how to express yourself vocally, um, it it helps you. It makes you it it makes you a better person, and it it'll it'll help potentially with your feed tubing, but it'll also just um, potentially help you down the road in things that you don't necessarily anticipate right now. Yeah, if you're if you're good at something, right, so you can better it. Mm. Try to market yourself better at that and compliment that with your VTubing, pretty mm -hmm. much. If you're a really VTuber and you feel like you're not getting the recognition you deserve, Happy. look for it somewhere else. Yeah. Gun drop! Oh, cookies! Rest. Happy! Oh. Gun drop! Mm. Go screw no. with the I might cut that part out. <laughs> no, no, you have to censor it. How to censor it? You have to censor it. You have to censor okay. it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> just, just go, Camille, like, go. Yes, <laughs> okay. I'm going to put all your links in the description. Uh, is there anything in particular, though, that you want people to go to or to look at? Just put the YouTube channel with the Emiko Niwatori channel, not the URL that you get. Mm -hmm. And put the Twitch. Okay. Um, well, thank you. Thank you very much for doing this with me. 